This is Jonas from VHDLWiz.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very first VHDL program. Hello world. I'm going to start by opening Notepad++ and I'll save the empty file by clicking File, Save As and I'll name the file T01 for Tutorial 01 underscore Hello world TB and TB stands for Testbench dot VHD. Now when we go ahead and click save, we will see that Notepad++ has changed to VHDL mode. So we will get syntax highlighting when we start typing. I'm going to start by typing the word entity. And we can see that Notepad++ is giving us suggestions. Next I'll type T01 underscore hello world TB, which is the same as the base name for the VHDL file we created. Next I'm going to write is and on a new line I'm going to close off this section by writing end entity semicolon. In VHDL new lines and spaces are treated equally and we have to use a semicolon to mark the end of a code line. New lines are only for making the code readable. The next section of the VHDL file is called the architecture and this is going to be the sim architecture of T01 hello world TB. After the keywords is and begin we are going to leave a few blank lines where we can later put our code in, before we close this section off by writing end architecture semicolon. Inside of the architecture we are going to create the empty shell of a process by writing process is new line begin and we leave a few blank lines before we close the process by writing end process semicolon. This is the skeleton of a VHDL file. I always start by creating something like this when designing a new module. The first section of the VHDL file is the entity. The entity defines the inputs and outputs for a module. We left our entity empty because we don't need any inputs or outputs for this module. The next section is the architecture. The architecture is where we put most of our logic and our algorithms. Inside of the architecture we can define processes. This is where we put most of our code. I want you to think of a process as a program thread. The code inside of it is executed sequentially one line at a time from top to bottom, just as in any other programming language. Inside of the process we are going to use the keyword report and hello world inside of quotation marks and we are going to terminate the line with a semicolon. Next we are going to write wait semicolon. Our program is now complete and we are going to run it in a VHDL simulator. I'm going to open Model Sim Student Edition. Now we need to add our VHDL file to the Model Sim project and we do this by right clicking in the project window. And we select add to project, existing file and we browse to select our file and click open. Make sure that reference from current location is selected and click OK. Now the file appears in the project window, but there's a question mark on the status. This means that the file has not been compiled and we do this by selecting it and clicking the compile button. Oops, something went wrong. It printed out compile of TO1 hello world tb.vhd failed with one errors but it doesn't give us any details about exactly what the problem is. Fortunately, we can change this behavior in ModelSim by right clicking in the project window and selecting project settings. Here we will have to check the display compiler output box and select OK. And now when we run compile again, it will give us some more information and here we can see that, uh, ah, the source file is actually empty because we forgot to save our file. So we click the save button in Notepad++ and run compile again. And now it didn't give us any errors and the status changed to a green tick. Now we are ready to simulate our design. And we do this by selecting the simulate dropdown menu and clicking start simulation. In the simulation dialog, lots of libraries are listed and they contain compiled VHDL code. 
if we expand the work library, we will find that our module is there. And this is because we didn't specify a library when we compiled the module, and by default, they will then end up in a library called work. Just select the module and click OK. Now the layout of ModelSim has changed to simulation mode, but the simulation hasn't started yet. To start the simulation, we have to click the Run button. As soon as we do this, we can see from the transcript window that it has actually printed Hello World. So what will happen if we press the Run button once more? Will it keep printing out Hello World over and over again? No, it doesn't, and this is because the simulation is simply continuing. We can see the time, the simulation time at the bottom of Model Sim, and each time we press Run, it simulates for exactly 100 nanoseconds. To restart the simulation, we have to press the Restart button. And we have to select OK to reset everything. And now we can see that the simulation time at the status bar has been reset to 0 nanoseconds. So if we now press Run, it will print out Hello World once more. Let's have a look at the code for a recap of what happened. When we pressed the Run button, the simulator started executing code at the beginning of the process, and the first line it hit was the Report Hello World line. And directly after that, it hit the Wait line, which caused the program thread to pause forever. That's all I had for you in this video. If you enjoyed it, please check out vhglwiz.com for more tutorials and blog posts.